It is stressful, but hopefully I can bring some color and make you proud of who you are. So, opulence, the art of drag and connotations. Because my first impression was, oh my god, how beautiful and how creative those artists can be. I was scouting all over their attitudes, appearance, and performance skills. Because for me, as a gentle woman, it was unbelievable how you can transform yourself so well and be that character, you know, with it fully. So, in great respect to all of the amazing performances, the artists, I want to depict their history and impact made on our society. Honey, no tea, no shade. Explanation of the term drug. I strongly believe that you've been wondering what does it mean, where does it come from, and here I am, I'm going to explain it very briefly. Originally, the term drug comes from the theater term used around the 18th century, where male characters impersonated female roles. While first dressing, their long dresses would drag on the floor. Then, it began to be used in gay communities and generalized to men wearing female clothing. It can also refer to drag kings, women impersonating male roles. Now, let's move to history, or I'd rather say, her story. Evolving from the theater background, the art of drag transformed into, the, into gay communities. In the 1950s, they began to perform in bars, and the whole phenomenon was more entertaining, since they were performing in front of the live audience. Another highlight of gay drag history is definitely the Summer Riots in 1969, which is contributed to the most important events of the gay liberation movement and the 20th century fight for LGBT people's rights in the United States. And those are the most important leaders of the Stonewall riots. In the 1980s, another draft of culture began to evolve bad kids. They were a young group of New York dance personalities led by Michael Elick. Their key values were avant garde fashion, gender fluidity, and TMI culture. And now, dive in it. Feel it. The New York City, around the 1980s. The epicenter of both high fashion and models. Modern scene of the, or the ball culture originated in New York City in the 1980s, especially among young Afro American and Latin LGBTQ communities. People competed for trophies, prizes, and glory, and even it's known as balls. They were based on diverse performances, combining dancing, singing, and modeling. Events were divided into categories such as femme or vaginal realness, face, body, and of course, vogue. Dance inspired by high fashion models in magazines. Mila Ninja, dancer and choreographer, has been recognized as the grandfather of vogue. And then, local houses began to take rise. They were meant to be some kind of alternative family, providing safety and shelter for those who have often been carried out of their original homes due to being queer. Because we have to imagine that, back to AIDS crisis, not only did they raise awareness about the serious health issue, provide some necessary information or supplies, but they also created a safe place for sick and rejected gay people in the US. It made, it made mark also on transgender people, because especially among Croatian minorities, there was a huge stigma that needed to be broken. And those tolerant and supportive groups were a true blessing in their lives. But to clarify, being drag doesn't mean being transgender. It's more about the art of performance, 
and gender expression. But of course, the dark community doesn't exclude their gender members. Back to the houses. They are led by mothers and fathers, who are usually older members of the Bollywood scene. The most famous ones are the House of Extravaganza, the House of Ninja, and the House of Laberja, and many, many others. And the Bollywood scene makes a huge impact on the contemporary culture language, music, and forever living items. Actually, we can get insight into some of the parts thanks to the portrayal in media. Documents like Paris is Burning or the programs, the polls, which is my favorite one and I highly recommend it to you too, were able to show this amazing community. Thanks to Madonna's song, Vogue, Wall culture gained exposure in the 1990s to a mainstream audience. In 2009, there was a premiere of RuPaul Drag Race, introducing the art of drag to the publicity and younger generations all around the world. Here we are. In 2021, when drag acts mostly associated with queer culture, expressing yourself, so, yeah, what does it mean to be a drag queen? What does it mean to us, ants and allies? Contemporary drag queens have the opportunity to perform, host their own shows, and participate in tours. They dance, they lip sync, create comedy lines, but also use their voice in important and serious stuff. By and large, they fight advocate for equal laws for the LGBTQ plus community and to raise awareness to the serious lack of awareness about inequality alongside constant abuse by authorities. But okay, besides performances, being drag means to be bold, to be brave, it's very emotional for me because how much does it take to overcome your fear of not being enough masculine? To put on amazing dress, makeup, high heels, and walk that damn runway. And not to be bothered by how to critique or to speak into some gentle norms. Is it self confidence? Having enough courage to express maybe your more feminine side? but just to express yourself through your creativity and those amazing performances. Drag queens are definitely my superheroes. They are so talented. They are able to combine so many talents and skills. Actually, I can't imagine how they are able to perform those high heels. <laughs> they are vulnerable, but at the same time, at the same time so strong and powerful. They are constantly challenging themselves to break that stigma and think outside the box, you know, spread all of those important messages all around the world. By creating a totally new, powerful persona, choosing those witty drag names and opening yourself to the audience, you have to have charisma, uniqueness, nerve and talent which are the essential rules of most of the contestants in the RuPaul's Drag Race. And those traits are my motivation. Even if I don't put on this wonderful sleeping dress, but I love to, I still have my protective shield. To be me, to express myself through my creativity. I can keep that positive attitude towards other people, and spread also this amazing message. I would like to just show you this art of drag, which I think is really amazing and needs greater insight into it. I want also to show respect and gratitude towards all wonderful performances who have been helping me and tons of other fans all around the world. 
I would like to end my TED talk with very experiential words. Opulence. You own everything. Everything is yours. Said by an even more inspirational character, General Abasia. Thank you.